This game's claim to fame is its spikes, of which it claims to have a thousand and one. I don't know if those figures are accurate or not. I lost count around 601, 602, 600, and f this game. Because seriously, f this game. 1001 spikes? It, there's 1001 lots of crap in this game. 1001 moments of hatred and self loathing. 1001 times when you suddenly feel the actual desire to murder someone. 1001. Seriously, f this game. Now, before we go any further, you gotta ask yourself a question. What kind of gamer are you? Specifically, what do you miss about the NES days? Because we all miss the NES days. It's become very clear that. We miss different things about the NES days. Like, I really miss the simplicity, and the charm, and the pixels. I, I guess I miss the innocence of gaming. But I certainly don't miss the difficulty. Apparently some people miss the difficulty. And if you're one of them, holy crap, don't even think about it. Get this thing right now. But, on the other hand, if dying repeatedly on the same level for hours on end doesn't sound like fun to you, well... Well, well don't look at me. I think this is completely nuts. 1001 Spikes is basically the Indiana Jones game that NES owners always wanted and never received. Let, let, let's not talk about the Temple of Doom. That thing sucked. That's something no one misses. Plays the son of Jim Hawkins. Yes, THE Jim Hawkins from the novel Treasure Island. Your dad sends you on a quest for treasure, platforming, and death ensues. There's some really great 8-bit cutscenes to fill in the details, but for the most part that's the setup. You're exploring caves and tombs for treasure. Caves and dooms with hella spikes. So obviously, it's a platformer heavily inspired by classic NES platformers. Everything from Super Mario to Castlevania, Ghosts and Goblins. And sometimes that inspiration's obvious, but again, this is a game that celebrates not just the look and the gameplay of the NES days, but also the difficulty. This game worships difficulty. See, another one of the things you have a thousand and one of in this game is lives. And, and that sounds like a lot, but when you're dying a few dozen times per level, a thousand and one lives it doesn't get you very far. Now, on the one hand, you can't help but marvel over the level design. Each one seems to introduce some crazy new idea, or combination of those ideas. I mean, it's, it's relentlessly clever, and it has this interesting vibe, too. It's like you know, the, the attitude and style of the retro days, but with that modern polish and deliberate difficulty. That combination is what makes the game work. Also, patience. The, ga that, the game needs that to work, too. And, uh, to be honest, Personally, that's where 1001 Spikes loses me. It's a totally subjective thing, but I, I've just never understood making games deliberately frustrating. Obviously, this gets down to the question of why you play in the first place. Like me, I, I play to unwind from the day's frustration, not to add more. That's obviously a more casual attitude, but if you're more hardcore, I'd, you might be totally into this and all the time and energy it takes. But for me, you know, the, the novelty of, oh, Look how hard this is! Isn't it funny and ridiculous? I mean, after an hour of being killed by the same obstacles, without checkpoints, that, that gets a bit less funny. A lot more ridiculous. But, subjectivity and personal views on gaming aside, 1001 Spikes is an incredible game, objectively. I mean, it, it just feels like an NES game. From the awesome sprites and music, to the aforementioned cutscenes, I mean, it's just a beautiful game, and it's incredibly well made. And again, one of the best things about looking at old design through a modern lens is that you can fix the control problems that some NES games had. 1001 Spikes controls perfectly. It's tight, it's responsive, it's just a joy to play. That is, until you lose a few hundred lives. That, that's less of a joy. Actually, that, that modernness is also evident in terms of content. Specifically, there's a lot of it. It's got more than 60 levels, there's plenty of characters and bonuses. There's some really fun multiplayer options as well. For example, th this one's kind of like a variation on the Mario Brothers arcade game, only you have to hold on to the treasure as long as you can. But obviously no one wanted to play with me that day. They just, they just got frustrated and walked away. 
And really, that that's the story with 1001 Spikes. I mean, it's a game you really want to like, but chances are it won't like you. It, it has a very specific audience in mind. And if you're not it... Well, such is life, I guess. You know, not everything can be for everyone. You'll either love this thing, and you'll have justifiable reasons for doing so, or you'll find the novelty just isn't worth the frustration, and you'll be justified too. How you look at a thousand and one spikes depends on how you look at gaming, and how you... Oh, come on!